Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu, and I'm speaking with Brett Jarnigan, and he's a creator uh, of the Lightroom Retouching Toolkit. Now, uh, I've been using it for some time now, thanks to uh, Brett's generosity. He sent me uh, the presets in, in, by email, and I've been using it and loving it. And I wanted to talk to him a little bit about how he got started, why he decided to get into this business in the first place, and really figure out maybe he's got a message for us all. So, Brett, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm uh, glad to be here. To answer your question, um, I'm kind of a crazy person that has to figure out everything. And if there's something I don't know, I just get completely obsessed. Sure. Uh, for instance, like when I was 12 years old, we got a computer. And I lived in a little town of like less than 100 people. So I had to find things to do. And uh, I just learned, I taught myself HTML and designed my first wow. website and started selling replica Oakley sunglasses online. <laughs> Because I noticed all my friends, we played baseball. We all wanted like the, you know, the the cool glasses that Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire wore, and um, so I, I started this website. I was actually number one in all the search engines as like a twelve year old um, selling stuff wow. online. And um, did you get shut down? I got shut down by Oakley Incorporated. I, actually, um, that's ironically becoming a photographer later. I was infringing on their um, of course photo copyrights by using their images. Oh, I see. Uh, so, yeah, I got shut down by Oakley Incorporated. Um, I got a letter from their lawyers or an email, and I, you know, as a 12 year old, replied, I'm 12, you can't do anything to me, et cetera. <laughs> and I told my dad, almost like bragging about it, and he's like, You did what? He's like, Delete that website right now. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> I had to delete that website. That was the uh, beginning and end of my first business. Wow. Um, but from there, like, my whole the, uh, the entrepreneur seed was planted at that moment. Sure. And so as I progressed, uh, I had lawn mowing businesses, and uh, I actually released a parody rap CD in high school. Um, and then I which picked up sold, a camera. Which you sold, I'm assuming, right? I did, I did. We, wow. we sold out. I didn't have the business acumen yet to realize we could make more copies. Um, <laughs> but we, we sold out, and uh, we were like a little you know, comical band in our hometown and everything. Um, but then I picked up a camera around 19 and just got completely obsessed with that and started photographing seniors and weddings and then eventually teaching workshops all over the world and speaking at conferences and mentoring photographers. And I found actions, Photoshop actions, around that same time that I got started. And I actually got started with Elements 2.0, if you were, it was that free disc you got with like a camera purchase. Yeah. And it was a really limited program and that forced me to figure out how to do everything you could do in Photoshop in that basic program. So I had a really good grasp on that system, and once I got Photoshop, then it was like a whole a whole new can of worms for me to uh, to explore. And um, I found actions, and I was never really satisfied with a set. Um, I felt like you know there might be three or four good ones out of you know a hundred, and so I just decided I was going to make my own. And so I started uh, this company called Life Camera Actions, and I made an entire workflow for photographers. But it started out just for being for me. Sure. And, and our claim to fame, so to speak, was I found a way to make textured actions. So this was back when textures were really blowing up. You had to have a texture on your photo. <laughs> and I remember of, those days. <laughs> yeah, I, I miss those days in, in a way. Um, but so I found a way to apply textures to a photo in like three seconds instead of like five or ten or maybe you don't even know how to do it. So that's how I got started with developing softwares. Sure. And, um, and finding a niche and finding a, a, a place or a need that other people have that came from my own needs and then getting those out to the masses, so to speak. So I did that. Uh, kind of an interesting story. I, um, I launched the website the day before I exhibited at WPPI. I was 22. I'd never even been to a conference. I'd never been to a trade show. I had no idea. So I packed up my little car, drove all the way out to Vegas, and then exhibited alongside, you know, Canon and Nikon and White House and all these huge companies. Pretty and I ballsy, I'd like say. What's that? That's pretty, that was pretty balls, ballsy, I'd say, yeah? Yeah, yeah, sometimes you gotta take a big risk. And uh, on the way out there, I was like, you know, I could lose every penny I invested in this, but I will have learned a $16,000 lesson that no one else my age <laughs> 
has yeah. learned, and wow. we actually did exceptionally well. It was really well received. Excellent. Um, that software is now used in over 30 countries. It's still available. Uh, it's called Life Camera Actions, if anybody wants to check it out. Um, and then I moved on to, so I was a Photoshop guy, because back, back then it was Lightroom 2. And I've talked to so many photographers that got Lightroom 1 or 2, and they just got it, and then they couldn't figure it out, or they didn't like it, and then they just went back to Photoshop. And I was the same way, but I kept hearing from people over and over and over and over, you should make presets for Lightroom. I'm like, well, I think presets kind of suck. They're inconsistent. Um, I don't want to make anything that's not consistent, that won't work on every photograph. And until Lightroom improves, uh, I just won't do it. So... Um, I switched, I finally, you know, switched over to Lightroom. I was like, okay, Lightroom 4 is out or whatever it was at the time. Got to check it out. And that became my new workflow. It, re it replaced Adobe Camera Raw for me. But the problem was that I couldn't retouch. Like, I couldn't retouch my photos in Lightroom, so I was having to switch from one program to another. It was just time consuming. And so I started to try and find a, a retouching solution for myself for Lightroom. And there wasn't one. Like the only thing that was available were plugins and plugins to me is almost like using another program. It's got a load and you, it's a whole thing, you know, it's just more clicks. So I just, um, I, I recognized that if I need this, a lot of people need this. And so I just made a list of all the things I wished I could retouch and everything I wished I could do with the brushes in Lightroom. Sure. So my desk was just covered. <laughs> like in all these, I listed the, the adjustment brushes before I even made them. So then applying all that knowledge I'd, I'd gotten from retouching myself and also developing actions and finding ways to make actions and presets consistent across all photographs, developed the Lightroom Retouching Toolkit, and uh, that brings us to where we are in this conversation we're having right now. Fantastic. Well, that's a great backstory on how uh, you've, you've actually used some of the experiences from the past uh, in terms of you know, creating a niche for yourself. I mean, this is fantastic. You've actually said, okay, well, I need it. I know right. other photographers are going to need this. So you've right. created something that people actually need. Uh, give us an idea. What, what is it? What is uh, Lightroom Retouching Toolkit retail for right now? So it goes for $89. Okay. I tried to really put it at a competitive price point. Anything that you find in retouching is pretty much 100 200 300 mm -hmm. And the market's changed so much. We all want things and we want them cheaper and we want them to be sure. better. And so I, I recognize it as something that everyone can use. I wanted to make it available at, at a price that everyone could afford, uh, especially like a, a working professional photographer who really needs to save time and get back to doing things that they would rather be doing than sitting behind a computer. So Absolutely. speed and effectiveness were, were the key elements to, uh, to making that product and then getting it out. Um, so the, the toolkit consists of 48 brushes that let you do everything from smooth skin, enhance eyes, fix hair, apply makeup, whiten teeth, um, dodge and burn. So it's not just for retouching, it's, it's a broader retouching, it's for local adjustments. So whether that's on the skin of a subject, the eyes of a subject, or even going through and dodging and burning different elements of the photograph mm -hmm. to get that balanced image. So when you have a balanced image, presets and effects and everything just look better. That's one thing that was tricky with making, well, it's tricky with making any of these things, especially presets and actions, because the way I shoot may be different than the way you shoot. That's right. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, so I get a wide range of images, um, high key, low key, light skinned, dark skinned, everything in between, and refine those brushes over and over and over until they work consistently on any image from any photographer with any style. But don't you think, uh, you, even having said that, uh, you still need to apply a preset and and then sort of, uh, you know, massage it into what it what you want it to be, right? Yeah, depending on what it is. Like if it's a preset, which these are preset brushes. So what I did was put them in different strengths. Okay. Uh, right. For instance, we have a thing called the beauty brush, which comes in like a standard um, natural skin and then like a, a more advanced, uh, a more advanced retouching. So that way you don't have to go in and adjust those sliders and make changes because I don't want to do that either. 
Like I, I just want the thing to work. Like I click the button and then I go in and, and make it work. Right. So, uh, and it's cool too with Lightroom because once you paint something on, if you switch it over to like maybe say the stronger version of that same thing, it, it just changes it on the skin or the eyes or wherever it is like that. You don't have to right. make adjustments. You can, you can make micro adjustments if you want, but I tried to make it to where you don't ever need to adjust the presets, uh, the preset brushes from the Lightroom Retouching Toolkit. Wonderful. Uh, there's a, a great push, at least I'm noticing a great push for uh, images to look more film-like. Sure. Uh, is there any room for perhaps an expanded version of the toolkit in the future where you're going to include film emulsions as part of this? Uh, sure. Uh, part of this package. Yeah, I've, I have so many, so I have life camera actions in the Lightroom Touching Toolkit, but I have like four things that no one's even seen yet that are done just while they're sitting on this computer. Um, let's look, let's look right now. Yeah, uh, so I, I have actually, um, I've converted the Lightroom Touching Toolkit to work exactly the same with Adobe Camera Raw. Um, I have something that I've been beta testing called Flow Presets, which I think I may have sent you a copy of, um, which is again, just, um, taking a look at what my workflow is and how I can make it faster. So what those are is it takes everything you would do with your, uh, your panels on the right side of your screen in Lightroom. So anywhere from you know, uh, uh, boosting the shadows to sharpening, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, and it puts it into preset format. So that way you can just scroll through, change your exposure, your white balance, all those things, but you can see the preview in the preview screen as opposed to messing with sliders which sometimes lag right uh, yes. and also if you're editing 3,000 images <laughs> it does save your hand quite a bit Absolutely, I mean, yeah. um, so I'm, I'm trying to fight carpal tunnel for, for people <laughs> and uh, I've also been working on uh, effect presets so hopefully all those things will be coming out this year making them as one thing building the websites and doing the marketing and trying to run Absolutely. several businesses yes uh, always makes it tricky Absolutely. but uh, this is great stuff uh, you know I think it's important to understand that what you're providing what you're selling is something that's going to save people time absolutely uh, you know I think this is sometimes lost on people who think oh eighty nine dollars that's a lot of money well not really uh, if you yeah if you what's your time worth yeah what is what is your time worth <laughs> you know? really you know um, I, I appreciate what you're doing, man. I, you know, so thank you very much. Uh, I noticed a guitar in the background. You, you, you are a musician. I know that too. Uh, and yeah. you've, you've got a few, is it one CD or a couple of CDs out already? Is that true? Um, so I don't even know how to define what I do for a living anymore. Okay. <laughs> but uh, at my core, I've always been a musician, a songwriter. Um, this uh, last, well, in, in late March, I played down at South by Southwest. Wow. Actually, a year ago today, I moved to Colorado. I, I literally left with that guitar and a suitcase, left everybody and everything I'd ever known, and just was, I just left. I was on the road. And so I ended up in Colorado. I stayed in downtown Denver, and I just moved to this other town called Fort Collins. Yep. And within, um, within like a week and a half of playing shows, I was out, I was doing nine open mics a week. Um, the right ears heard me, invited me to go down and play at South by Southwest. So that was, that was phenomenal. And then came right back and, uh, I got an hour spot on the radio playing all originals. Really? So that album that's, um, wow. that's up, I think it's soundcloud.com slash Brett Jarnigan. If anybody wants to check it out, um, or you can just search Brett Jarnigan music. And if you can't spell my last name, Google will assist you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do. I'll be sure I have to that. link to it. I'll be sure to link to it. <laughs> That'd be right. cool, man. Yeah. I, I do have a, a live, a live album up, so to speak from the radio. So excellent. Thank but yeah, that's, um, that, that, that's ultimately what I'd like to be doing is, is just playing music for people. Awesome. And so the photography side of things is, is uh, what, a business venture in some ways? Uh, and the guitar playing is more for your soul, I may imagine? Yeah, the, uh, the photography and, and everything. I, I love all that stuff. I love making products. I love teaching photographers. Um, I, wa I just want to make, my goal in life is net positive impact. Um, and my decisions have been very much driven by that for really since I graduated high school and started a business. So all those things are awesome, um, but they help fund my <laughs> music career, which pays um, very, very little. But, uh, you know, 
time will tell if that if that goes anywhere. But sure. I've been doing that for 15 years now, like writing songs and. It's really cool. I, I, like I said, I grew up in a town of less than 100 people. Sure. We didn't really have a music scene. <laughs> so nobody really cared. A lot of people I, that I have known my whole life didn't really even know I played music or played on like a really serious level. And then I moved out here and then everybody's like, is it, what's he doing now? <laughs> like that's all I see is just pictures of him performing. So, sure. so that's, uh, so that's moved, my, uh, what's that? Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, so you've moved away from actively photographing events or like weddings and things like that are you just completely sort of invested in only the music part right now and the photography and the photoshop actions and the presets are all part of you know the grand plan is to keep you know making money helping people out sure uh, but at the same time advancing your music career is that is that fair uh, I think for me, it's about finding the balance between all those things. I mean, you can't be too heavy into, well, you can be, you can be totally obsessed with just one thing, but um, your hobby, my dad gave me one piece of advice that really stuck with me, which is find one thing, two things that you love, make one your job and one your hobby. And so I, I realized there's no money in music and I also love photography and everything that goes with that and then teaching and um, I, I taught workshops um, on off-camera flash all over the world. Like I've taught in Argentina and Mexico and I've done three tours of the U.S. And all that was amazing. But uh, ideally, at some point, I'll be on a tour bus playing music. Awesome. That's great. Well, I wish you the very best, Brett. I thank you again for what you're doing for the community here. And uh, I will be sure to mention all the links, uh, all the websites that you've you've you sort of sent me uh, to before the flow of presets, uh, obviously the lights, camera actions, uh, and uh, the Lightroom uh, retool kit, uh, which I think is is I is really the one that's going to save people so much time. And I people take, I can't stop telling people this: save the time, get off, get Absolutely. off the computer, go make pictures, make images, make photographs, you know, make art. You or know. just be with your family or, be or, with your family. or play or, guitar absolutely. or whatever it may be. Exactly. So. And there's so much that can be done uh, if you just sort of figure out your workflow and your how, just to make it more efficient, right? So Absolutely. And this is what you do. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Take care, buddy. Everyone have a wonderful day. Bye. See ya. See you, man. Bye.